Hi, I'm Michael Killen. This is a live taping session for the film that we are producing, Painting to Change the World. And as I have worked on this film and also the development of an art exhibition, Climate Change, I've come to a few conclusions and I, I've learned a few things. And I'd say the most provocative thing I learned is that this decade will probably be called the decade of the environment, sustainability, and uh, maybe awakening. I'm sorry to say that if we don't awake and act wisely, the next decade will probably be called the decade of survivability. I leave it to you to think about that, and I hope it's meaningful to you. On this show, we're going to look at an important topic, biological diversity. We're going to try to find out why it's so important to you and to me. And I have invited a woman who's a PhD. She is Shay Wolf. She is from the Center for Biological Diversity. I'm going to ask her a series of questions to help us understand why biological diversity is so important to you and me. How are you today? I'm well, thanks. Wasn't that a long speech? <laughs> but an important one. That's very, very kind of you. First thing I'd like to ask you, why is biological diversity important to us, especially at a time when more and more people are realizing that climate change is not only real, but is a threat to our economy, maybe even civilization. So why is biological diversity of importance to us in this particular environment? Mm -hmm. For many reasons. So one of the important things about having intact ecosystems, having a lot of other species on the planet, is that those species provide so many important services for us. And these are things that are invaluable and irreplaceable and we take for granted. Sometimes we don't even realize how important it is that, of the things that this web is providing us. So just to name a few of those things, I mean, if we think about insects pollinating our food crops, if we think about healthy coastal wetlands, those you know, marshes or those mangroves are buffering our coast from storms or from flooding. Um, if we think about, and this is especially important in the context of climate change, if we think about healthy forests, forests packed with biodiversity, those forests or those savannas, those grasslands are important for storing carbon. So they, and especially the more intact that they are, they store a lot of carbon. So instead of that carbon going into the atmosphere, polluting the atmosphere more and leading to more runaway climate change, that carbon stays in the forest. So when we cut those forests down, when we disturb those systems, we lose that tremendous benefit. All right, so you, I'd say the most interesting, important thing I heard from you is that the biologically diverse forests or other ecosystem or mm -hmm. body or volume of land, air, mass, and everything, mm -hmm. uh, it serves to take carbon out of the atmosphere and put it in the ground. And it's better in the ground than up there in the atmosphere. Yeah, so when we look at, that's exactly right, and when we look at where the carbon pollution in our atmosphere comes from, about three quarters comes from burning fossil fuels, which is actually sort of old plants and animals that were turned kind of into carbon and then we dig them up as coal or gas and then we burn them and put them into the atmosphere. But the other quarter of the pollution that's in the air is due to deforestation. So it's due exactly to cutting down those forests that are storing the carbon and keeping that carbon in wood instead of putting it into the atmosphere. And one, of, uh, one key step that we need to do around the globe, in the United States and around the globe, to help solve the climate crisis is reforestation. We've cut a lot of things down. Putting those things back is going to be really key to pulling carbon out of the atmosphere. Okay. So if I have an acre of land or a farm or just a yard, mm -hmm. I should be thinking about planting a lot of different types of grasses, or different types of plants and some trees. And I should welcome the, the bugs and the worms mm -hmm. and everything because 
they are really working for us. They are, they are working for you. So they're working in, you know, you're, if you have a garden or if you have a yard and you're not using chemicals, you're kind of encouraging, you're planting plants that encourage hummingbirds to come or bees to come, you're providing the space for, you know, animals and plants that don't have, you know, otherwise have other places to go. And then also you're encouraging sort of a healthy environment for yourself. You're encouraged, if you're growing your own garden, you're encouraging local organic food. And that is also really key for reducing our carbon footprint, for getting our food locally and organically. And I, I wanted to bring in another, you asked me why biological diversity is so important, especially in the context of climate change. And one thing is that across the globe, you know, everywhere we look, here and now, we are seeing serious impacts to wildlife species. We're seeing you know, from polar bears and penguins at the poles, if we go to the equator with frogs or corals, or even in our backyards, we're seeing impacts to climate from climate change in those species. And they are the early, early warning bells. They are telling us that something is seriously wrong. We are disrupting the environment, disrupting the climate. So we are causing species to decline um, and near extinction. That is a wake up call for ourselves that the end of species foreshadows the end, you know, a perilous future for ourselves kind of the dem our own demise. If we're disrupting the environment enough that we're causing species extinctions, we also be better be worried about our own futures. So you say the demise of the polar bear and some other uh, species, that's an early warning sign mm -hmm. that we should heed, mm -hmm. right? And we should heed it because, let's see, it's, there's this food chain thing, and if we lose one species in the food chain, another species is affected, and it just keeps going up the line. Exactly. So as we kind of, you think about it as a web of species all connected together, and we're part of that whole web, as you continue to, to poke holes in that, as you continue to, you know, to, you know, drive species extinct or drive them down to low levels. You're poking holes in that web. And that whole web, which provides us, as I mentioned, with clean air and clean water and all the things that life on Earth depends on, gets weaker and weaker and less able to provide those roles. So the impacts, those impacts to species affect us all. Let's see, now you have a PhD. So you've had the opportunity to study all of this, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, have not had this opportunity to study and see this web that we are part of, right? And, and of course, uh, people, all viewers out there have different knowledge that they ha and experience mm -hmm. that they've developed without you know, the schooling. But you have this special ability to see things in a larger context, right? So you really believe that this is these early warning signs are threatening the whole web. Do you really believe that? Oh, absolutely. That's, that is why I do what I do, which is work for the Center for Biological Diversity in trying to protect species, protect wildlife um, from impacts from climate change. And we do that in a lot of different ways. But I spent many years as a field biologist in different parts of the world studying birds, um, studying mammals, studying a whole variety of things. And what I found in every setting was that we were pushing things, species to the brink further and further, that we are leaving very few places for species to live. We're paving over, plowing under, cutting down their habitat. We're putting toxins into the environment. We're introducing exotic species. And that's disrupting the whole web. So we sort of have set up an ecological house of cards that we're part of. We're, we're damaging the system so much and then on top of that we have this layer of climate change um, where we have this tremendous this is the gravest threat to ourselves to our planet to wildlife and we have we are already seeing tremendous impacts around the globe and we have this shrinking window of opportunity to act so the the impacts to species around the globe, the signature of climate change around the globe is a warning. And I guess it's not an early warning in, anymore. We need to act now. It's a warning that we, that we need to rapidly reduce carbon in the atmosphere 